And on a more scientific front, we know how the differing weather patterns too play a role when speaking of activities that goes on in our ocean. To gain more insight, we speak to Dana Roma from the Climate Change Office. I teira, ko taia te CITV ki korei te upati o te climate change i te hui hui maramatu no runga i te ao nino e te la nina i roto i te tuanga o te tau i ranga arewa. Ko i aso te CITV ki tēna rongo, he a te tai tūkati anga o te ao nino e te la nina i roto i te tuanga tau i ranga arewa. Nga karoko ea koe te aka marama mai ku tai mo te ao nino e te la nina. Aka marama puto o atu i te i te El Nino e te La Nina i roto i te Pāmoana Pacifica ko te Western Pacific i te tuai Papua New Guinea mā, te Philippines i te tuai Australia mā ko te ngai moana māna ana roa te tēne ao e akaratato ki te tua i te Eastern side ko te tua anua nu te ko te trade winds ki te tato Pāmoana e pupu i mēna nga te tua nga te Eastern side ao So, me akarari e tatou i te erang o te trade winds ka nga tatou rea te opera o atu rei e te taimana i noo o atu ki te tua opunga te western side Nga ra, me teki te te i tuatou o te trade winds a tatou i kite pupu i mea nga te tua itinga mai ka riri nui e me riri nui e ka O para ai e rea e tra tai anu, o para me e tra tai anu ki te tua opunga, ki te western side. I nga ra, a ko te o hirea, ko te laninia condition te, e rua o ki tu o te taui anga rea, ko te laninia condition te, me riri nui te trade winds, toto e e tra tai anu across, ki te western side o te Pacific. Me te era tatou, i te te i tua tou, ka topa tra trade winds i te te i tuatou ka pupu i mai tra trade winds nga te tua opunga mai nga te western side mai te ka tupu ria tra tai maana i te tua opunga toto ai i mai ia ki te tua itinga across the pacific ko te akamarama anga te o te ao nino e te la nina e tukeke e tanau ang tatou e tanau impact area po i meni to tatou pamon mainly te tua o te ua e te vaya tura pera ka toa ra te erango o te ika me te aia. E i te monire oki i te pākene, ko rawe i atu oki te tai iri i kāpuanga nga te tuanga o te marine i korei i te New Hope Church. E i rutu i te rera ai hei, ko oru ngā toa Georgia Lang tēn i te tai presentation no runga i te neke anga o te ika e a ai i rutu nei i tō tātou pae moana. E i nana ai i rera, ko tai atu te CITV ki ko i te MMRO no te hui atu ki Georgia no runga i te neke anga o te aai, i te tuatou o te ao nino, e te la nina. You presented at the recent meeting by the Marines, the New Hope Church on migration of Tun, in response to climate shift. Can you please explain how does the Tun migrate in our waters during the Lamina and our nino? The warmer waters that are found in the equatorial Pacific region. And so during El Nino years, uh, sorry, La Nina years, those waters tend to be pushed further in the Western Pacific, in areas around Papua New Guinea, Philippines, those places. Um, and they're kept, those warmer waters are kept over there because of the prevailing trade winds and, and the equatorial currents that are pushing it in that direction. And then on the other side of the coin is La Nina years when those trade winds sort of relax and the equatorial currents weaken, which allows that warm water, of, that pool of warm water to then push further towards the east, um, over towards our zone. And that's when we tend to see more catches in our, in our EZ. Um, so there's been some tagging studies done by SPC, which indicate that skipjack follow these warmer waters. Um, so during La Nina years, there's more of a westerly movement of these fish over to the Western Pacific. And uh, during El Nino years, it's the opposite and we see them moving further east. Now one for you, Ben. Um, mm -hmm. How is this information used um, for the management of our fisheries here? Yes, well, um, you know, the science is very important when we manage our 
skipjack fishery and we use the science from the region to have a bigger picture but also the efforts of our own MMR staff um, to look at the smaller scale uh, local picture. Um, as was explained, um, skipjack can move very quickly from east to west depending on whether it's La Nina or El Nino and we have actually seen that uh, trend happen um, currently at the moment uh, it's a kind of El Nino condition where that warm pool of water is above the Cook Islands and with that warm pool of water we've seen some very high catch rates um, double the normal catch rates we would expect um, so in the future if we can anticipate a La Nina or El Nino event we can anticipate whether we're going to have high catch rates in our waters and maybe on those years um, you know we can be prepared to charge um, vessels more because they will be more profitable so on top of the, the El Nino La Nina that I mentioned earlier, there's also uh, another climate cycle that operates on top of El Nino La Nina. And this is called the Interdecadal Pacific Oscillation or uh, the, inter, uh, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Now, now, this climate cycle has two phases, just like El Nino La Nina, that's two phases. Um, it has a negative phase and it has a positive phase. Now, the negative phase, uh, we saw that from, 19, from the 1940s all the way to, the, to around 19, the early 1980s. This was the negative phase. This period, or this phase of this cycle, uh, is when La Nina became frequent. Okay, now we know La Nina brings a lot of rain to uh, to the southern Cook Islands, and that's what happened. You know, we had all our wetlands filled with water. Tilapia was everywhere, and so forth. That was the wet period. From from the 1980s to around 2000 to the 2000 late 2000s, we went through a positive phase. Now the positive phase is when El Nino becomes frequent. Okay. So um, this also brings a lot of cyclone. That's why we had a lot of cyclone in recent decades, because we went through that positive phase of this decadal cycle where there was frequent El Nino events. Now, this also, um, as mentioned earlier, influenced the migration of tuna. So uh, in recent years, though, in the last few years, this cycle is going back into the negative phase again, which means we will have a higher frequency of La Nina events. Now since the tuna is um, tend to follow this warm water, La Nina is going to be, uh, that warm water body will remain to the west. So that indicates that there's going to be less tuna in our waters for the next 10 years, 10, or 20 to 30 years, provided that this cycle remains as it has in the last 100 years or so more than that I, I would think um, and so uh, it would probably be um, good that we consider this cycle going into more La Nina events that's predicted uh, in terms of um, fishing in our waters um, perhaps we can't afford to give more uh, fishing rights to uh, you know to outsiders to fish in our waters because there's going to be less fish anyways because of this um, climate cycles um, and that would definitely affect the local fishermen that's already at this point um, not getting um, in fact this is already evident in here throughout the Cook Islands we've done some interviews throughout the Cook Islands we went north south and it supports this already there is a decline in these resources throughout the Cook Islands Perhaps this is the reason um, the shift into this negative phase is keeping the fish to the west and not so much to the east. But as we go through this negative phase, it does not mean that there's no more El Nino events, but the frequency of El Nino will decrease, definitely as shown in the last um, several decades in terms of um, the linkage between this decadal cycle and El Nino La Nina. So, um, yeah, it doesn't mean that it's, there's not going to be any El Nino, but like I said, the frequency will drop.